you guys don't go for the shredded cheese okay that's more expensive get yourself a block of cheese and shred it yourself 17 cents per ounce as opposed to 25 cents per ounce So today I'm sharing some cheap $2 keto meals that you can eat for you and your family. Even if your family is not eating ketogenically, trust me, all of these meals are delicious and you're going to want to try it. Okay. So if you're on an extreme budget or you're trying to just cut back, but you still want to eat the ketogenic lifestyle, these are ways that you can cut corners when it comes to grocery shopping and meal planning so that you definitely don't feel like you're missing out or you just feel like you're so bored with um, grilled chicken and broccoli. Some of these meals will hopefully inspire you to try something different and to make sure that it doesn't hit you in the wallet too much. A lot of these meals are gonna be super flavorful. They're delicious and quick and easy to make. Also, I wanted to add that I try to keep these keto meals as clean as possible, meaning I didn't wanna have a lot of processed food. I think the most processed thing probably is a low carb tortilla. But other than that, these are whole foods, meaning that you, know, you cook it yourself and they're not microwavable or instant or anything like that. And they're super delicious. And so you wanna try to keep it as clean as possible if you want the best results when it comes to keto. Not everything has to be full of cheese and eating bacon and there's nothing wrong with that in moderation, but you definitely want to make sure that you're getting your greens in because trust me, your digestive tract will thank you later. Before we get started in the video, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, which is Monk Pack. Monk Pack has some delicious keto granola bars and nut and seed bars. I've tried many keto friendly bars before and I gotta say this one, these have been some of the best tasting that I've ever had and I'm not just saying that. I love the fact that there's just one gram of sugar or less, two to three grams of net carbs in each bar and each bar contains 150 calories or less and they taste really good really, really good. They have a variety of flavors. My personal favorite is the sea salt dark chocolate one. That one is really good. And I love the fact that there's not some weird aftertaste and the ingredients are clean. They they just taste really good. And it's great to have something like this to throw in your purse because the worst thing that you can do is when you're out and about and get hungry when you're eating ketogenically because there's just too many temptations all around. And if you're busy like me, like, you know, you guys know I have two young children and we're ripping and running all the time. It's just great to have that back up in your purse so you don't just go and order yourself some fast food that's not keto friendly. In addition to being keto friendly, the bars are also gluten-free, plant-based, and non-GMO, no sugar alcohols or soy or artificial flavors. So they're really, really um, good. Like I said, the in ingredients are clean. So to get 20% off your first purchase of any Monk Pack product, you can go to monkpack.com and use the code GIA, J-I-A, at the checkout or simply click the link in the description box down below. So before we go into the meals, I'm gonna share with you what I got at the grocery store. I went to Aldi because I felt feel like that would be the best bet for my area with what's on sale, but definitely check your papers and see what's on sale. Check all the different apps to see what's on sale before you go in and go shopping. Little carb tortillas. You guys, don't go for the shredded cheese, okay? That's more expensive. Get yourself a block of cheese and shred it yourself. You can get mozzarella for $1.39. It's the same size. These are eight ounce blocks. This is an eight ounce bag. Excuse me, this is a 12 ounce bag, sorry. But it's still cheaper to buy them yourself. Uh, buy, just buy an eight ounce block as, a, as opposed to the shredded art. So you can get a, um, a block of mozzarella for $1.39 and a block of cheddar for $1.39. 17 cents per ounce as opposed to 25 cents per ounce. Kroger has the cabbage on sale for 59 cents a pound. So just shop around. Purple cabbage is my favorite. That's 99 cents a pound. Now Aldi would have been a better place to get your chicken, but they were all out of chicken at my Aldi. So the chicken thighs there were $1.25 per pound, but I had to come to Kroger 
where they're one ninety nine a pound. So I'm gonna get a pack of chicken thighs. The Kroger mini pepperonis. Full size pepperonis, two for five dollars. So two dollars and fifty cents for a pack of pepperonis. All right, so I have my chicken thighs here. I washed them in the sink and I dried them thoroughly with the paper towel. It's really key that you get them as dry as possible. And also you can do this recipe with any chicken that has the skin on it. You can do this with chicken breast. You can do this with chicken wings, legs. I've done it with all different types. I personally like the thigh this way the best, especially when I'm eating ketogenically because it has the most fat in it. So. Okay, I'm gonna set this bowl to the side and now I'm gonna get my seasonings together. Here are the seasonings that I'm gonna use. Now listen, you use the seasonings that you wanna use, whatever you usually, you know, cook your chicken with, but this is what I personally like. Of course, the trio, salt, pepper, and garlic, that's a must. I like this rotisserie chicken seasoning, some smoked paprika, curry powder. If you've never had curry fried chicken, girl, I'm telling you, or guy, <laughs> I'm telling you it's good. It's nice to add, it just adds a little something to your fried chicken and some onion powder. So I'm gonna, you know, I don't measure anything, but I do just use my nose. Just keep smelling it. However it smells, that's how it's gonna taste, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna do all these seasoning, and then I'll show you what the secret ingredient is to make sure that your chicken is nice and crispy as if it's been fried in some deep oil. Also, make sure your oven is preheated um, at 400 degrees. The one seasoning that I did add was some regular paprika to give it a deeper color. The paprika I find browns the chicken really nicely. So this is smells how I want it to smell. The curry just sweetens it up a little bit. It just smells so good. Now the key to your chicken becoming, you know, nice and fried and golden is baking powder. I add about a tablespoon. Just see how it looks, maybe a tablespoon and a half. It just depends on how much seasoning you have. If you're making more than four pieces of chicken, remember this this has to be enough to cover the front and back of the chicken. So make sure you're just putting enough seasoning in your bowl to cover both sides of the chicken. Again, I'm only cooking four pieces, so this should be enough for me. That baking powder is really gonna, gonna be what makes it crisp up. So now I'm just going to take my seasonings that I've combined. You can see the, the baking powder makes it look white, but it'll still brown in the oven and I'm just gonna sprinkle it all over the skin both sides of the chicken very very well you can also prepare this ahead of time and put it in the fridge or let it marinate in the fridge it's totally up to you over here I have a my baking rack this is a non-stick baking rack. You do not have to use a non-stick baking rack. You don't, if you don't have a pan like this, you can just use a regular baking tray, put foil on it, and then put a rack on top of that. But you definitely wanna try to get a rack. You could get a rack at the Dollar Tree if you need to, like a baking rack, so that the, the chicken will crisp up on both sides. You won't have like a soggy side of the, of the chicken, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna turn these around one more time. seasoning left I'm going to turn them over again and season them again because you want to just make sure that all your bases are covered all right so now I'm going to place them on the baking rack In the oven these this goes we're gonna cook this for a total of one hour put it in the oven set your timer for 30 minutes then we're gonna flip them and then set your timer for another 30 minutes you're gonna keep the temperature at 400 and they're gonna come out delicious okay y'all this is how it looks after 30 minutes I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out and turn it over this is how it looks 
pull it out. Let me go ahead and flip them over. All right, the chicken's almost done, so I'm gonna start on our cabbage. I'm gonna cook the whole head of cabbage, but we're only gonna eat half of the head of cabbage tonight. The other half I will make with the next meal, which is gonna be sausage and cabbage. Now, cabbage, it is keto friendly, but it does have more carbs on it than carbs in it than like let's say broccoli or cauliflower rice or something and sometimes you just get tired of broccoli and green beans and you want something different this is a great alternative i'm going to show you how i make this up this fried cabbage up now right now like i said i'm just dicing the whole thing i'm going to cook this whole head but we're only going to use half today with our meal because i usually make sure i only eat one cup of cabbage because i think that's six net carbs and that's the max for me for dinner so i'm gonna go ahead and finish dicing it up i have a small yellow onion here and diced up just use whatever you have on hand this is how i make my sauteed cabbage it comes out so good so my eyes are watering from cutting the um onions up but let me tell you what's the key i save my bacon grease until i fill this container up and it comes in handy to just cook in, especially if you're keto and you eat bacon. I'm telling you y'all, this makes the world a difference for, for flavoring. So I'm gonna take a heaping spoonful like that of the baking fat. I use I usually cook my bacon in the air fryer in a um, some foil, and then I just fold the foil up and pour it in here while it's still hot and then it cools into this. Um, so this is pure bacon fat and it's going to saute our cabbage wonderfully. So I'm gonna um, brown the onions in here in this baking vat, and then I'll add the rest of my stuff in. Of course, you don't have to have this. If you don't have it, you can use any oil, butter that you have. Okay, my deeper just went off on my chicken. I just took it out. I added some minced garlic now that my onions are cooked through. Let me show you my chicken. How beautiful does this look, y'all? Nice and crunchy. It's just gonna be so good. I'm gonna let these cool. Make sure you take it out right at an hour. Do not overcook this chicken because it'll get dried out, but an hour is all you need. All right, I got the whole head in there. Again, we're gonna cook it all because we're gonna use the other half later on this week. So, I am going to season it with some saison, garlic powder, pepper, salt, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, and some smoked paprika, and it's gonna be so good. So let me go ahead and season it. Again, I just eyeball it, so you know, you just have to eyeball it, smell it, see how you're gonna like it. And remember, all that good, flavor is now at the bottom in the bacon grease and onion mixture but you got to get to it so you got to cook it I'm just going to keep mixing it around here's how it looks with all the seasoning on it it smells so good you should be able to smell it by now again I have my my heat on medium about medium I'm just going to keep on tossing it so that every piece gets that flavor in it I'm telling y'all this is so good this is something the whole family likes even if they're not keto and you're the only one who is and it's really cheap to feed a lot of people so the way you cook it adds the flavor to it and so i'm just going to keep on cooking this down while my chicken cools okay i'm going to top this off with some butter because listen that's a perk of being keto butter makes everything delicious so i'm going to mix this all around yeah this is so good i cannot recommend this enough oh it's steamy so once this butter melts this is done and we're gonna eat. Always add your greens when you can. Do whatever kind of salad dressing that you like. If you don't have any salad dressing, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, or just oil and vinegar and salt and pepper and garlic tastes really good. So just however you can fit your greens in, that's the best way that makes sure that your, you know, your digestion goes kind of smooth and you're getting the fiber that you need. You always wanna make sure you get your greens in. All right, I wanted to show y'all what one cup of cabbage looks like. That's what one cup of cabbage looks like. See, it's plenty. And look how much you have left. So again, we're gonna split the cabbage up. You don't, I mean, this is a lot of cabbage. I probably won't even eat all of this. I'll probably give it to my husband, but I'll probably just have maybe a half a cup or three fourths cup. All right, y'all, so the next meal we're gonna have is sausage and cabbage. This was $2.59. We are going to fry, slice this up and fry it up. This is two more meals with the cabbage that we already had uh, cooked, um, the other half of the cabbage. And so actually, I'm only gonna use half of this sausage, dice it, slice it, and then mix it in with the cabbage, and that's gonna be two servings with that. The other half of the sausage you can eat for breakfast. Uh, you could add it to your pizza, and maybe we'll do that. So I'm only gonna use half, this is so easy, y'all. So I just took half of the sausage, 
slice it. And I'm gonna just brown it on both sides in the pan and that's it. Warm up your cabbage, add the sausage to the cabbage and dinner is done. Now you can also add bell peppers if you want, but just the sausage and um, cabbage is very, very good and it's very filling. Look how they look turned over. Just a few minutes. I'm gonna add it to the sausage and then that's dinner. That's two more meals. All right, y'all, dinner is served. Now, I know some of y'all like to keep your food separate. <laughs> There's a piece of me that would just put my sausage in on the plate and then the cabbage on the plate and eat it separately. Or sometimes, it just depends on the mood, I'll just mix it all up. But this is two servings. I just split this like so. This is two servings as well, as well. So you could either mix it up or plate it separately. But this is your full meal. Next up are Build-A-Burgers. I like to call them Build-A-Burgers because you can literally put whatever you want on your burger, season it, flavor it, however you want. Uh, you know, relatively speaking, when you're eating ketogenically. Today, I think I just used salt, pepper, garlic. I also added Flavor Bomb Burger seasoning that I think I got that from Sam's Club a while back. And that's just how I season my burgers. This is about a pound of ground beef that I got from Aldi, it's $4.99. It's organic. It's grass fed and that's kind of on the cleaner side of keto. I know it's not the cheapest way to buy ground beef, but again, it is more on the cleaner side of keto. To use a bun for my burger, and I mean, you can get low carb or keto quote unquote buns and everything, but some of those kick meat personally out of ketosis or certain ingredients in them, but the low carb tortilla does not. So what I like to do is just use a low carb tortilla. I personally am using some queso cheese that I had on hand, but you can use some shredded mozzarella or the shredded cheddar that we got from Aldi. Again, just use whatever you have in your refrigerator. So in order to like crisp up my bun, I'm going to butter a, a pan, butter the bottom of a pan. These are how you can crisp up your tortillas and just kind of let it brown at the bottom because the tortilla will kind of like crisp up and the cheese is melting on top. I put cheese um, on there first and then put the burger and then put some more cheese on top. And you could put onions in there, cheese, whatever you want to do to put it in there. Anyway, so the the bottom it ends up being nice and crispy. I added some guacamole and sour cream. Again, I know this isn't part of, of our original budget. This is just what I'm making for my family this particular night. But you can just add whatever you have. Make sure you have a salad, add a salad with this. That's so you could get your greens in there so that this, the ground beef doesn't feel so heavy on your stomach. This is so good, so delicious, and it's a great way to have a burger. Next up is taco, okay? Keto tacos, I love keto tacos. I think they're so good. So many different ways you can make, make them. I like to crisp up my low carb tortilla. Again, I'm using some queso cheese because I had that in my refrigerator, but you will use your shredded mozzarella and cheddar cheese on top of some ground beef. This is the other half of the ground beef that we use for the burgers. It's just seasoned the same way. It's good. You can add some taco seasoning on top of it, but you want to ground, you want to brown your ground beef for your tacos. And you're going to crisp up the taco the same way with butter in the pan, add the meat on there, the cheese, brown it on both sides, and then add your favorite taco seasonings on there. Super affordable, cheap meal that's delicious. Add your salad with it because again, just the salad and the greens make everything a lot better and, and cleans up your keto meal a bit. So for this meal, you guys remember I picked up the blocked cheddar cheese because it's way cheaper to just buy the block and shred it yourself. This is an eight ounce block. Like I said, it's way cheaper to just shred it yourself. And actually the cheese tastes a lot better to me. It's not dry. It's a lot nice and moist. So I'm about to make a homemade pizza and I'll show you what, the, and what you could do with this is just use whatever leftover veg veggies you have. Use it, throw it on your pizza. It probably will taste pretty good. Um, I usually use make mountain pieces where they're really, really high and just would put a lot of veggies on it. But this one, I'm gonna keep it really simple. I'm just gonna use the pepperoni, cheese. I'm gonna put mixed greens on there 
and it's gonna be so filling and I'll have a nice salad with it. So here's my low carb tortilla. I poke some holes in it with a fork, just stabbing it all over so that it doesn't bubble up. I drizzled some EVOO on there and sprinkled it with Italian seasoning. I'm gonna put it in the oven for about five minutes or so. Just watch it after five minutes until it's your level of crispiness. I like a nice crispy pizza, so that's why I like to have mine a little bit crunchy, but I will check it after five minutes. And uh, the, temperature, the temperature of the oven is 350. This is after about five minutes. I could have put a hole right there so it's not so puffy. I'll probably keep it in for another two minutes or, or so. I said I like my crust thin and crispy, but this may be good for you, so just check it, eyeball it for yourself. Okay, she's ready. See, it's nice and crispy, love it. All right, so I, I don't put sauce on my pizza. I don't know, I just don't. I never have. I mean, you can if you wanna use sauce, but you know, to just stay on budget. Try it this way, I think you may like it. All right, let me show you what I'm gonna do first. First, I'm gonna sprinkle some cheese on there. Then I'm gonna put my mixed greens on there. I know it may sound a little bit eh, but um, trust me, it tastes so good. And again, if you have any extra veggies to add on here, like peppers or uh, broccoli, mushrooms, any other veggies like you would have on a normal veggie pizza comes out delicious. I'm just going to add my mixed greens, some mozzarella cheese, I have some sautéed onions, and pepperoni. You can add the leftover sausage on here. I personally don't like the sausage on the pizza, but my husband does, so again, it, it's, it's up to you. So let me go ahead and make my pizza up. I put a little cheese down, mixed green, now I'm going to add more cheese, then the peppers and um, mozzarella cheese and then I actually have some goat cheese in my fridge. I'm gonna put some of that on there. Oh, fresh tomato. Now again, this, you don't have to do the fresh tomato, just like I said. Add what we, we bought this week um, to make a $2 a meal, but for me tonight, I'm gonna add myself some fresh tomato. Oh, this is gonna be so good, y'all. Again, the tomatoes and the goat cheese, that's not a part, but you know, I cook real food that my family and I eat and so this is just, the, I had a tomato in there and so that's what I added to this. So I drizzled some more EVOO on top. You can put some more seasoning on here if you want. I wait and just put some red pepper flakes on top once it's done, but I'm gonna go ahead and bake it in the oven for about 10 minutes. I'll watch it after 10 minutes, still at 350. And I just store the leftover cheese in a sandwich bag and put it in the fridge. Yummy, doesn't this look delicious? Oh, cannot wait to bite into this. Let me go ahead and add my red pepper flakes. Here we have it. Yeah, this is gonna be so good. And I'm telling you, you will not miss the sauce whatsoever. All right, guys, so that is it. What is your one of your favorite cheap keto meals? Now, I know I added some things that weren't included in the total budget, but these are just things that I had in my fridge that we literally ate that night. And so, again, that doesn't take away or mean that you can't have delicious food with it being cheap. Even if I just use everything that I purchased, the food still would have been delicious. And these are just some different ways that you can, you know, jazz up your keto meal. So, again, leave a comment down below and let me know which one was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I love you all so much. Make sure you share this video with anyone in your life that's eating ketogenically that maybe wants to cut back on their groceries or anything like that. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.